I'd like to thank you so much for this extraordinary honour. And I have to say, standing here looking at you, you look really clever. So you've got a lot to go for, but absolutely, congratulations on all that you've achieved. Just to give you a little bit of background to my story, um, I was a, primary, a secondary school teacher. I did teach for eight years. I wanted to be a teacher. And there came an opportunity to start to do work on projects in my spare time. And that's what I did. I started to design resources for primary school children. I started to work with people in that sphere. And then people started to like the things that I did. And more people got to know about them. And I did more work. I did it at the same time as I was working as a teacher. And then, after I'd done this a little while, a friend of mine said that there was a pot of funding going that I should apply for, because it was to encourage more people to become engineers, and they thought that the work that I was doing would lead towards it. So I thought, well, that seems like a good idea. I can do that. So I applied for the funding, never really thought much about it. And then, not long afterwards, a letter appeared on the doorstep, brilliant idea, go off and do it, you've got three years worth of funding. Now at that point, you have to make a decision. You have to say, is this idea that I had, this little idea that I've been playing around with, worth giving up my career, worth giving up all the things that I'd planned to do? And as you kind of looked at it, you thought, well, you know what, if I don't do it, I'll never have another idea, because when I had the opportunity, I stepped away. So I did. I left my job. I started primary engineer in the back bedroom. Uh, we progressed from there to 13 staff and two offices. So we've done all right in that sense. But I didn't actually agonize over it. I just thought, oh, do you know what? We'll do it. We'll do it. It'll be all right. And it's that kind of thing that kind of has continued on, as I can attest to last night when I was thinking about this speech, thinking, Okay, it's a bit scary, but we're going to do it. Over the last 12 years, 65,000 children a year take part in the programme. We train over 2,000 teachers each year to be able to teach engineering in the classroom. We've worked with the Caledonia Club, thanks to Dr Andrew Cowell and all his work of inviting us in and presenting us in a position so that engineers, undergraduates can get involved with the programme. As a graphic designer, I have this great love of children's drawings and this great love of creativity. And engineering is such a creative medium and most people miss that, which is a real shame. So we started a project where we asked children, what would you do if you could be an engineer? 45,000 children over the last three years have invented something. And I thought it would be nice to share with you some of those inventions. One of my favourites, or I've got a few here, um, was a four-year-old who invented a camera over his bedroom door to recognise his sister approaching so it would lock. <laughs> my other favourite is a five-year-old who invented a music player, a little girl, you might be able to guess, five-year-old who invented a music player that sprayed water through a prism so she could dance under rainbows. <laughs> and also one specific for Scotland, a satellite designed to deflect sunlight onto Scotland to cure rickets. <laughs> and that was a nine-year-old boy from Scotland. I don't know what it is about these projects, but they're inspiring. These are things that children have spotted. They've problem found, not just problem solved, they've problem found. And this year we're off and running again. And we had the first entry. And normally, first entries arrive, they're all kind of categorized and people start to work on them. But this one stood out and my staff came in and said, you've got to see this one. And it was an envelope and all over the envelope was drawings of things engineered, cars, planes, rockets, everything. There's a big sticker on it as well which said £1.50 to pay. That's how enthusiastic this pair was. So Alfie and Jack had designed a shoeva to pick up shoes that had been discarded about, tidy them away. They'd written pages and pages 
on the design, explaining how it was going to work. And then, for a reason known only to them, they carved it into a piece of wood. I've never ever received a carved entry before in our lives. It was extraordinary. But all these things that these children make, all these things that these children design, in a way, could be a personal project. A personal project that could spark an idea and lead them on somewhere else. And I think what I wanted to actually say in this speech was that you will do amazing things. Your jobs and careers will take you in all sorts of directions. And some of you will enjoy every minute of it, and some of you will be left wanting a little bit. So my, my thoughts to you are, remember the common good. Remember those ideas. Find projects that sit alongside the things that you do, and do them. Do them to make you happy, do them to make other people happier, and do them for the common good right the way across the board. I'd like to thank Dr. De Silva, and also, oh sorry, Professor De Silva, and Professor Cameron, Do, uh, Donaldson, for all their work and for bringing me here today and to be able to share this with you. I'd also like to thank my mum and my daughter and my son for all their support, because that's what you need. You need someone to laugh with and you need someone to go and talk to about things. So once again, I wish you every success in your career as you go forward. And thank you very much for this great honour.